Good morning, welcome to the Vineyard at the River. If this is your first time, welcome. And we're so glad you're here. And you can help yourself at any time to communion over here at the table. My name's Aaron Brown, and we're going to go ahead and just start worshiping. So we're going to pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your life. Thank you that you're still raising the dead. Yes, you are. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you that your kingdom is coming to the earth. Our Father, it's in heaven. That your name be kept holy in our hearts. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory.
to be afraid this one thing remains Jesus this one victory of your cross this morning it is your love oh the victory of your cross this morning it is it is your love yeah there's a table you prepared The presence of my enemy. It's your body, your blood, you shed for me. And this is how I fight my battle. Wow, this on. is how I fight my battle. Does it take?
This is how I This is how I find my balance This is how I find my balance This is how
mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of God
that extended note it's kind of a place of anticipation um, you know there's a joke I'm a fermata so hold me for those of you who are musicians but um, the thing is is that there's this tension in the air that you get to walk in the presence of God according to how he's revealed himself to you and he's revealing himself to you as good and um, what I believe the Lord is saying, there, there's a couple of uh, prophetic things God wants to say, and then I want to release maybe one or two words of knowledge because that's what we've been doing lately. And I'll explain what that is. But really quick, the goodness of God. You know, David said, and I, I've said this before, but when he only had one prayer left in him, and uh, um, after he lost everything, and his mighty men were going to stone him because that's what you do, when everything goes wrong, uh, you, you, you know, kill the leader, right? And so, 
Isn't that encouraging? <laughs> and so, um, no, maybe not. And so, um, he said, he strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself. He spoke to himself. He remembered. He put the members of himself back together with Christ as the head, so to speak. Come on. He put himself back together and he said, I would have, I would have given up. I would have lost heart. I would have thrown in the towel had I not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not in the sweet by and by. That, that, that comes. That's in the contract. Heaven, you know. But now, now, the goodness of God. And, and also what that means is, is it's the same word, T-U-W-B, in, in, um, in Hebrew as the word that the Lord said to Moses. I was talking about this last week. And when Moses said, show me your glory, and he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. It's the same word. So His glory, His goodness, come on. Come on. It's a good day. It's a good day. So before I go any further, uh, Brandon here, you remember this man. This fine young man. Anyway, he has something here to share. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, one thing that I feel like God is doing right now, I just feel like I see Him walking around the room and just actually rubbing your shoulders as He releases uh, comfort and compassion over what you're walking through right now. Um, and so if that's something that you need, I feel like He's actually even just right now for some reason, I don't know what's going on in here in this, this session, but I feel like God is rubbing a lot of shoulders in that session right now. I'll take it. And releasing a lot of compassion over your life. I don't, even though He might release it to you for others, I feel like He's showing His compassion for you right now as well. And so just receive that, whatever that looks like for you to receive that. Uh, one thing I also felt like God was doing was restoring faith in our hearts. It can be really hard when we're praying for something for a long period of time and we don't see the fruit of that. And so I feel like today, it's, He's reminding you how good He is to restore that faith in our hearts. And that's for me as well. Right? Just when we look at Him, that's where our faith comes from, and knowing who He is. And so today, I believe that He is restoring that faith that we once had as we look at Him again. No, oh, that's awesome. The word, the Lord, the word the Lord is speaking to you today is the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Wow. That's a command. Wow. When you see anxiety, worry, stress, and fear come, do not be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. And this is the key one. When the Lord showed me this years ago, I used to be worried and anxious about everything. He said, with thanksgiving, I want you to thank me first before you see anything happening. I want you to put your trust in me. I'm God Almighty. I can do all things, but you got to put it in my hands. He said, let your request be made known unto God. So it's like writing your fears, worries, and cares on a piece of paper and handing it to the Lord. Don't take it back. Give it to Him because this is His promise. When you make your request made known unto God, the peace of God, yeah. you cannot buy peace. It comes by Him. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Now listen to this. This is what peace does. It will guard your heart and it will guard your mind. Yeah, that's good. It's a guard. Peace is a guard. You won't be anxious and worried about nothing. You won't be dwelling on it all night long, worrying how you're going to fix it, how you're going to make things take place. He said, just give it to me. Yeah. And realize when you do, I go behind the scenes and I fight the battle for you. I enter into those problems and situations and circumstances and bring them to an end. So Lord, the Lord says, put your trust in me. Do not worry and be anxious about anything anymore because I want to give you the peace that's a guard on your heart and your mind so you can walk around and accomplish what I want you to do on earth. So follow me, says the Lord, and do what I say because 
I love you and he said I guarantee you have a visa and you say wow why did I wait so long to get it what can we say well, I'm gonna hold on to those things because um, we have some more exciting things to do so Lord thank you for what you've been saying and when you show up and say stuff you know what more can be said so we bless you for that Jesus name. Amen. Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Vineyard at the River. Uh, if you're a visitor, we want to give you a special welcome and later there'll be some offering baskets that go by and there'll be some connect cards in there so you can grab one of those and fill it out and that way we can connect with you. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't this wonderful this morning? You know, Aaron made a joke at the beginning. What if we just all lay down and enjoy some rest this morning? <laughs> and I feel like I just experienced some rest, just basking in the goodness of God. And um, along with the word that Claudia gave, I feel like God's inviting you to rest. Some of you have been worried and anxious and busy. And God's saying, enter my rest. You can trust me. I will do what I've said. So this morning, um, actually, let's just, right now, if you've been worrying, why don't we just take that to the Lord? I'm going to yeah. give you just a moment of silence and just confess, Lord, I've been worrying. Forgive me and help me, God, to trust you. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to help us to walk in his ways. So just receive that blessing today, and every time you start to worry, just take it to the Lord. Okay, Don. Don has a word for us this morning. Yay. The Lord, bless Don. Bless the word that you've given him today, Lord. Open our hearts to hear and understand what you have for us this morning. Amen. Amen, amen. Something's happening next week. Good morning. How are you? Isn't that good? I thought it was good. I think so. Worship. You know, worship is simply turning our hearts and our attention toward God. Yeah. That's all it is. Because when, when we see Him, when, when we turn our attention toward Him, our only response is to worship. We see His goodness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, He is goodness. He's kindness. He's gentleness. I love some of the words this morning. I love some of the songs this morning. Sure. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you've been faithful, and all my life you've been so, so good. <coughs> I, I, I have my notes, and I, I probably ought to bring a spare piece of paper, because then I start writing around my notes when people talk, and I get it all out of order, but that's okay. One of the things that was said was, to put your trust in me. Don't be anxious for anything. Trust in me. The word came saying that he wants to restore faith in our hearts. Yeah, come on. You know, I think sometimes we go through so many things in our life where our faith, it just seems like it's, it's, it's dwindling. And our faith just isn't enough. And we go through those times where we just go, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Times that are anxious and in times that are um, just beyond anything we've ever been in before. This morning um, we're concluding our series on parables. If you remember, we started this um, quite a few weeks ago and the first parable we talked about was the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I wanted that to begin the series on parables is because the parable of the sower, to me, is something that I, I personally am always looking at. Because the parable of the sower, it's not so, so much about where the seed, how the seed was spread. 
It's about how the seed was received. Mm. That's, right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so um, one of the things that, that I tend to do in my life is I'm always looking at um, my heart. And I think I encouraged you guys uh, during that sermon. I said, listen, look at your hearts. Um, see how your ground is in your hearts. And sometimes my, the ground of my heart becomes... Uh, a little bit hard, not a bitter hard, but it becomes hard because um, I think I know, uh, that's not a good way to say it, because I become dogmatic in my beliefs. That's what I wanted to say. There's a, there's a hardness in my heart sometimes that looks like just being dogmatic. I know the answer. Wow. And if you hang around me, or I will tell you the answer to your problems. And here's the problem for me in that. It's, I also live life, and I see that sometimes the things I want to believe are true, don't seem to be. I don't know if anybody else experiences that. Some, I mean, just living honestly, I, I, you know, it's funny. As Christians, sometimes we don't want to live a real honest life. We want to live a life that we hope is true. Sure. And, and if, we, if we actually acknowledge the reality of life, then that's a problem because you're not supposed to do that because then that reality will overtake you. You need to believe what's not true as if it were true. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> For me, I have a hard time doing that because I, I want to understand God. I want to know him, and, and, and I know that he loves me, and that he's good, and yet there are times in my life where things are happening where it seems like it's anything but good. Um, this last week, I've been praying for a family, uh, a man named Mike, Yeah. and Mike is, uh, I've got to meet him just a couple times, and he's one of those guys for me, there was like this instant connection. And, and I remember uh, I saw him on 4th of July, and I was like, I want to get to know this guy. He was just this honest, uh, just intelligent, uh, likable, loving guy. And I remember sitting with him and just, as I, I, as I often do with people I'm getting to know, I said, Mike, tell me your story. And, and so he began to tell me about how he came to know the Lord, that he wasn't even seeking for him. And it's funny, after he got done, he stopped and he said, you know, I haven't thought about that for so many years. And I thought, I like his honesty, I like this guy. Well, Mike is in a difficult place. He's been sick for months and they found out it was something to do with his heart. There's, I could have Rick up here and he'd give you all the medical stuff. Um, what's the name of that sack? I call it a sack. Pericardial sack bag thing. It began to harden, which meant, as it did, um, his heart would stop beating eventually. So they had to actually go in and take that, uh, take his heart and remove that sac and the, the things that had already hardened. And it was a very tedious, long time. And now he's in recovery, or and it's hard. It's hard because you, you know you go, will he make it? Family is at that place, and so uh, this morning, my 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 heart is there. My thoughts have been there, and and it's not one of those places where I can just sit here, stand here as your pastor, and go, I just know what's going to happen. No, no, <coughs> I don't. But all my life, he's been faithful. And all my life, he's been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I want to sing of the goodness of God. You see, no matter what we go through, no matter where we are, some of you are in really difficult places. Okay? I don't know what you all have gone through. Some of you are physically in hard places. Some of you emotionally. I don't know what you've gone through. But the truth is, all 
your life, he's been faithful. Mm -hmm. and the truth is, we serve a God who is so, so good. Wow. Wow. And you know what I love about God? Is it's not how well I'm doing that causes him to love me. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay? It's not that I'm living up to a standard that he goes, okay, now I will love you. Wow. He is love. Amen. And sometimes it's actually it's hard to see it. So I wanted to look at a very short parable this morning and then a very short story that would kind of give an example of the parable. And um, I have like huge pages of notes like I always do. Um, but I just want to speak from my heart, if that's okay, and not do so much reading from my notes. The parable is uh, about faith. Right. Faith, it's a word that it's sometimes I think it's really hard for us to understand. I think we all kind of say, okay, I, I think I understand what faith is. And I can, I can put certain words in there that, that it's like, okay, that's what faith is. Like, um, faith is belief. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I believe. I believe God. But it's, it's got to be more than belief, because the Bible even says that the devil believes and trembles. It's, it's got to be more than belief. So, faith, for me, I think the word that best describes it is is trust. Trust. Because sometimes things don't turn out the way I have faith that they will. Sure. And so I trust. Because really faith is, I'm putting my trust, Father, in you. That's what, for me, faith is. That I can trust him, even when it's really, really hard. I've heard all kinds of talk on faith. Some have left me hopeful. Some have left me hopeless. Some have caused me to be much more a grand, much more grander vision of God, to have a, a view of God that's much bigger. And some have caused me to have a view of God that's very small. Some people tell me that, that faith comes from God, and then other people tell me that, that I'm responsible for my faith, that you're the one that has to work on having faith. I've heard it all. I've met people that talk like they completely have faith pegged, and they have a handle on it. And I've met people that felt like they completely lack it in every area. When I, when I think of faith, there's so many things I think of. But what it comes down to, and I've heard so many teachings on it, what it comes down to is, do I trust a God who loves me? See, He's faithful. He's loving. He does really, really, really love you. Do you trust Him? In the difficult times, in the good times, do you trust Him? So if you're in church this morning and you're struggling in some area, you're here on a really good day. Because I think God wants to do something. Yes. We're going to look at a parable Sounds good. that's found in Matthew chapter 13, verses, just two, just two verses, 31 and 32. And this is a parable that's in the same, it's the third of three parables. The first was the parable of the sower. This is the third, it comes after it. And it says, He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. They can make their home in its branches. So, faith is like this grain that's planted in my heart. 
in the, in the soil of my heart. It's the smallest seed there is. I'm sure there are other seeds by this time we've found that are smaller. But in that day, it was the smallest. See, I look at my face sometimes and I go, I am not a walnut. Is a walnut a seed? Is it a seed? Close. Walnut? That's a seed, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a nut. It's a seed, right? Yeah. So I'm not a walnut. I'm like this speck. That's my faith sometimes. But if I take that speck and I plant it, I allow God to plant it in the good seal of, uh, soil of my heart, it says that that thing will grow so big that it grows like a tree. I'm rubbing on this, aren't I? Is that bothering you? Because it is me. Yeah. Who says it's bothering <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Did I take it? There. Uh, can you face it like more towards your nose rather than your... It's hitting your collar. It's, it's hitting your collar. Oh, it's hits my beard or my collar. It's both. How about that? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know, is that... Will that work? Yeah. Are we a little better? Okay, I'm sorry, everybody. This is the devil. He doesn't want me to talk about this stuff. Something huge is started from something so small. Yeah. You know, the Bible says don't despise small beginnings. Come on. Something huge can come out of something that is so small. Yeah. When I think of the, of a mustard seed in a corporate sense. The church started with 12 men. 12 basic rejects. Come on. <laughs> that Jesus took. Not a whole lot special about them. Yeah. And yet he called them. And from those 12, over thousands of years, there have been millions and millions of people whose lives have been changed by Jesus Christ. Come on. A small seed. In a corporate sense, we can see that 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 small seed could be the disciples, we can also look at our little church. Do you know that if we as a, as a church, as small as we are, began to plant our mustard seed of faith in this community, that it would grow, that our faith would grow, and that people would, would be able to find a place that they could call home. How about that? And they could rest in it. Oh, that our church would, would grow in, in faith so that when people come, they find this place that is just loving and caring that they can call home and call their church. Mm. Their church, not meaning their religious place, but their church meaning their family. Because really, guys... That's where we are, and that's who we are. And I'm going to rip this thing off. <laughs> so faith, it's small. Faith is trusting God even when as small as a grain of mustard seed is. When it's that small, it will have an impact on your dreams. Trusting God no matter what your circumstances look like. Trusting God no matter what mistakes you've made. Trusting God though your past looks terrible. Trusting God though you still don't trust yourself. That's a good word right there. Amen. See, faith, if we take that small seed of trust, and we feel like I don't, I really don't have a handle on it. And, I, and I, I don't know what it's going to look like, and yet we allow God to plant that in us, it will change us. I'm going to tell you a really quick story out of the Bible. Mark 9, uh, verses uh, 14 through, I think it's uh, 22, I think. Jesus has just been up on the Mount of, for those of you that go to church a lot, you remember the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. That's right. God shows up in a cloud. Right? All this stuff happens. Um, and then Peter goes, hey, this is really cool. Let's just stay here. And Jesus says, nope, sorry, we're going down the mountain again. Okay, so I won't make a big deal of that because I could teach on that for a, a whole Sunday. But they come down the mountain, and as they come down the mountain, it says this, and, and when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them. 
and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about? Some of them. So he got, he got these religious people arguing. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> what are you arguing about? Someone from the crowd answered and teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and he becomes rigid. And, and so I asked your disciples to cast it out and they were, they were not able to do it. He answered them. He looks at his disciples and he says to them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. So Jesus isn't really happy that he comes down from the mount and now his disciples are in an argument with the scribes and, and they're trying to cast out this demon and the demon's not coming out. And Jesus is kind of like, guys, I've taught you this stuff. How long do I have to stay with you? Okay, one more time. Bring him to me. And so, they bring the young man to him. And when the Spirit saw Jesus, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into a fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do something... Would you have compassion on us and help us? But if you can do something, yeah, come on. have compassion on us and help us. I, when, I, when I read that, yeah. do you see the father's heart here? Do you see the dad's heart for his son? He's, he's kind of reached the end of everything he knows. His boy, for, for his many years, has had this problem. And he's probably tried everything he knows. He brings him to the disciples and, and they can't even do it. He's heard stories that, that they were and, and, and then his son comes in. It isn't happening. Can you hear his desperation? Please, Jesus. If you could do anything for my son, would you please have compassion on us? Would you please help us? Do you ever find yourself there? David, would you please help me with this? Is this right? I'm sorry. I think you fixed it. I don't know. You do the job, David. Please. Have compassion. <laughs> Is that it? Okay. All right. I'm always afraid I'm going to break the thing, so. <laughs> Have you ever found yourself there? Honestly, a place where you've tried everything and nothing worked. This, this father has reached an end in himself. You know, I, that's kind of how I felt this week. Got a message from someone that said, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I thought, me too. Honestly. I know I'm not supposed to be. I'm a pastor, right? And I'm supposed to have it all together. And my faith is supposed to be bigger than everybody's, right? That if, if I just believe hard enough, then everything will be fine, right? And yet, I can say sometimes, just in reality, um, I'm scared. I know what I want to see happen. And I know that God loves me. He loves Mike. And He loves Nancy. And He loves the kids. People get into places of desperation and you just want, want it all to be different. So this dad, he comes to Jesus and he says, uh, if you can do something, I've tried everything. I, I, I don't know what else to do. If you can do something, would you please have compassion on us and help us? <coughs> 
And then verse 23, Jesus says to him, if you can. Now he wasn't angry at this point. He wasn't, he was just kind of making a statement. If you can. He says, all things are possible for one who believes. All things are possible for one who trusts. All things are possible. I love this next verse immediately. It didn't take it didn't take a moment for dad to think about it. Immediately. This is the the, the dad and just he's just he wants so badly for his son to be okay. And so as soon as Jesus says that, he says, it says, immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe to help my unbelief. Do you see the desperation? This is at a place where it's like, I do believe, but I, I don't know if I believe. I, I'm hoping, but would you help me with those things so, so that I can believe so that my son will be okay? I want you to notice that Jesus didn't say, well, when you get to the place yeah, come on. where you believe enough, yeah, come on. <laughs> when you reach that threshold, well, then we'll, we'll talk again. You go, go away and get some more faith. He didn't say that. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. What I like about this is the dad is just being gut honest. He's not trying to impress anybody. You know this term, fake it till you make it? I hate it. Yeah. He's not trying to fake it till he makes it. He's literally at wit's end and says, I don't know what else to do. And all I have, the only faith that I have, is this little mustard seed that looks like I'm bringing it to you, Jesus. My faith was just to come here and ask. My faith was... I got the son that's hurt. He's the, the torment, and I don't got a lot. I don't know much about anything. But I heard maybe you could help. His faith was enough faith to get him to approach Jesus. That's all he had. Yeah. He comes out totally honest. I love this about him. I love it when I, when I find honest people that are not trying to tell me what they should think or should believe and that I'm really doing, but they just say, right now I got nothing. I got nothing. Jesus, I believe, I, I, I'm believing the best I know how. If having my son healed requires more faith than I have, would you help me get more? <coughs> Is it, if it's possible, would you heal my son? And so Jesus, he saw the crowd come running. And he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing uh, him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He's dead. That's great. <laughs> Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Faith. Come on. Mustard seed faith. Guys, I don't know where you are and what you're going through. And sometimes we feel like, I, you know, I don't want people to see what I'm going through. See, this, this dad wasn't embarrassed about anything. He was desperate. Yes. And I think sometimes in, in, in church in particular, we like to look like we got it together. Look like everything's okay. And when it's really not. Some of you may be in a place of desperation today. So my encouragement this morning, as we sing here in just a minute, is that you'll bring 
your little bit of faith that you have, however small, come on, that you will bring it and come honestly to Jesus. Mm-hmm. There's a as I was praying about this, thinking about it. I don't know why this came to my head, but I'm guessing that maybe God had someone plant it there. If it wasn't him, well. And it was this, dance like no one's looking. And I thought, what's that got to do with anything? (laughs) See, when you dance like no one's looking, it doesn't matter. You just go, I was in Uganda dancing like no one's looking. (laughs) But people were looking. (laughs) It's a great film. Here's the deal. When you dance like no one's looking, it's like, I don't care what this looks like. That's so good. Come on. I really don't care what this looks like. I'm desperate. Come on. And so, I'm not going to put any pretense on it. I'm not going to fake it at all. If you come to Jesus in a desperate place, I will tell you He will hear you quicker than if you come to Him going, yeah, you know, i got this little problem. Yes. He goes, okay. See you later. If you can take care of it yourself, go ahead. Desperate. Dance like no one's looking. Doesn't matter what you look like doing it. The only wrong way to come to Jesus is to come pretending. Ooh. Let me say it again, guys. Ooh. That's good. The only wrong way to come is to come pretending. Wow. See, he sees it all. And if you're asking him to do something, then he's asking you then. Will you be honest with me? I'll do that. I love you. And so this dad brought his son, mustard seed faith. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. I'm trying to believe. Would you help me in my unbelief? And as you plant that seed in the ground of your heart, my prayer is this, that God will cause it to grow. And that it will become, that your faith will begin to grow in a way that you never ever dreamed. That you never ever dreamed. That you would be able to trust Him with every single thing. And know this. Aaron, come on up, the team, if you're coming. So good. Know this. He loves you. Yes. Yes, He does. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. He looks at you and He loves you. Wow. And He wants more than anything to be your dad. Say the it. dad you never had. Say it. The dad that knows exactly who you are and you can be who you are in front of Him without embarrassment. Wow. So, we're going to sing a song. And then I encourage you, um, if you need prayer, to come on up over here. We don't have a lot of time, but we do have a couple of minutes left. So good. Um, announcements, um, you'll do those after, after the song. Okay, so if you need prayer, if you're in a desperate place with God, yeah. even if you don't think it's that desperate, but you're going, boy, God, I, I really would like, and I want you to come and just allow God to love on you. Okay? Would you do that? Come on. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am the tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all I am excited, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And
opportunity. Next week is Compassion Sunday, and we will be actually taking up two offerings. Go ahead and move. Yeah. Uh, we'll be taking up two offerings next week, so we'll be taking up one for benevolence specifically, and that's the fund that we use to pay people's rent, medical, dental expenses. We use that to bless so many people throughout the year, and we'd really like to encourage you to bring a cash or check next week because we're going to bless that offering and we'd love to have it in person. But if that doesn't work for you, you may still give 
in the variety of ways that we have here, just make sure that you designate that it's a benevolence offering so that it will go into that fund if you give online. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. You can make your way over to the donut room now.